Hello YouTube, Mr. Report Newsletter, and Tutor Chat subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is January 21st, 2019. And this is the uh, Mr. Report for the third issue of 2020. And uh, today just happens to be the first day that the Senate takes up the impeachment of Donald Trump. Been checking that out a little bit on the TV. This mystery, uh, this week's newsletter program, this weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1 1 through Revelation. Hope that you'll uh, benefit from this video and I hope that you'll share this this video with others this is really interesting stuff once you see the three witnesses in the scriptures it really just changes everything now my apologies I had to cancel the interview again over health issues with crystal we're trying to we're still trying to connect and uh, her her best days Fridays mine's Friday and we're doing treatments for this condition that we have on the way that it's working out once a week is here on Fridays hasn't worked out yet then uh, John sent in number eight, Miss Report. This is from 2012. All these radio shows are from 2012. John sent in one a week. And this is the video from BIM, uh, Bible Chat from last week. Remember, we have chat tonight to every Tuesday, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. More information on that once we get through the, uh, the opening report this week. Heavenly Rewards and spiritual, spiritual Blessings in Christ Jesus. It's being driven predominantly at this point by uh, supporter questions. Jeff, through the week, last week it was Brian. More down in the newsletter in uh, the featured section. Questions from Brian. This week we took one from Trevor. My goal is to lay down a foundation so that we're eventually going through the mystery explained and what I'm trying to do is be led by your questions more than anything else after all that's what's the most important thing thanks to you and you guys are helping to drive the narrative then uh, so Trevor writes me on Sunday Sundays and Mondays is when I'd probably it's likely because of the black star update reports and things Sundays and Mondays are the two biggest days if you send me a question on Saturday or Sunday, that's a really good time to get it uh, so that it will be eligible to be the top, this uh, top question. Then he writes, he says, Hi, Terrell. Hope you're doing well. I wish I was doing better, actually. I have one quick question. Please explain the difference between the rewards that you teach about as not beating air. That's a quote from the Apostle Paul. Uh, to get closer to Christ, the chief cornerstone compared to Ephesians 1 3 as it says I have been given all spiritual blessing in heavenly things in Christ and that's going to be the Wycliffe translation and um, where things is actually going to be heavenly places the heavenly places in Christ Jesus okay so I can kind of see what Trevor's asking if I already have all spiritual blessings then what kind of reward are you going to give me at the end of the age that's going to be you know how's that different what makes that better or what makes the heavenly blessings better so I begin by as always thanking you guys for writing thank you for very much for your support and thank you for writing me the beginning of wisdom is oftentimes in a carefully constructed question when you send that question then it helps me to see from my experience of doing this for years and years, decades, and answering tons and tons of these, tens of thousands of them. And when you go back all the Bible boards, going all the way back to the 80s, it helps me to see what you are looking for, what's around the corner, what's around the bend, that's just escaping, just, just beyond, over the horizon, if you will. And... Um, my goal is to try to help you to see that as clear as possible. And um, 
So the, uh, the substance of the truth taught by Paul, writing in 1 Corinthians 9, does not say, I, Trevor, have been given all spiritual blessings in the heavenly things in Christ, which is a quote from Ephesians 1, with similar statement in Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. Let's begin by looking at the verses from 1 Corinthians 9 that include your not beating air phrase. This is what Paul is writing to the Corinthians chapter 9. Do you not know that those who run the race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way as you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Therefore I run in such a way not as without aim. I box in such a way as not beating air. But I discipline my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Capturing the meaning of what Paul is dispensing here, which is grace doctrine, requires us to start at the top of the chapter, where verse 27 above contains the concluding remarks. A good example of what Paul is teaching here is on display in my work in providing lengthy replies containing the right answers to questions asked by those for whom Christ died, and even where perhaps the short answer would should suffice. Those among us driven by the Spirit go the extra mile in running the race in such a way as you may win, taking these things very seriously indeed. Now let's examine the verses from Ephesians 1 and 2 where Paul teaches on Christ being the capstone. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, who are faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we would be holy and blameless before him. The operative term in these verses with respect to your query is us, where, the God, where God and Father of Jesus Christ says, bless us collectively with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God also chose us. So the thing to realize there is that, yes, us, we have received and we have received all spiritual blessings too. But collectively as a body, as one body. So you get your measure, I get my measure. God gives you a measure of grace, he gives me a measure of grace. He gives you knowledge, allowing you to see his wisdom, does the same for me. The thing is, he gives us a, each a part. So that we work together. We are required to work together. We all grow together in one body. Some being like the eye, some can see so clearly and they can explain things using diagrams that's that's kind of my job god let me see these things a long time ago and then there are members of christ's body they're more like the hands that carry the message and the mo and the, the voice that speaks the message though the feet you see we all work as one body you do your part i do my part one member of the body is not supposed to be self-sufficient do all things one member of the body is not given all things Collectively, we're given all things. We all work together. So in time, as time goes on, so I'm giving my testimony now. I'm going to continue giving it. But then you're going to see it, and you're going to start giving your testimony, and you're going to see things I don't see. You're going to help me to see things. Those that are learning from my ministry right now are going to help to teach me things later in the timeline. Once you grow up and mature, because God has given you these special things. It's making me smile. See it. He's given me certain things to give to you so you can see the light. And then you're a son of the light too. And you standing in your position over there in this darkness, underneath this darkness of this dark veil that Satan has over us, that the same darkness that fell in Genesis 1 2, the evil forces of this darkness. Blessed are those that see these things later in the timeline, in the ages to come, in the ages of light. But more blessed are those that see it now and share it now 
in this evil age. When it's so easy just to give up and crumble, to be subject to the darkness. Even though you're saved, to be misled, to be led astray. Blessed are those that see these things now and share them with members of Christ's body while we are still in this darkness. So collectively, yes, we have all things, but you have your gifts and I have my gifts. So you begin at the beginning in Genesis 1-1 where we see God. This is where this is my method many times is to go right back to the beginning, right back to the Genesis of things and then see where things go from there. We see God and then heaven, which is the word. I'm kind of building on the foundation that we've already built. See, this is lesson eight. Go back in time. We're seeing the difference between God and my father who art in heaven. God and my father who art in heaven. All right. And the difference between Christ Jesus, the heavenly man, Christ Jesus, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ walking around on the earth. So if you're seeing lesson eight, as your first lesson, then you're going to go back and look at lesson one, the difference between the two gospels, the two churches, four baptisms, and to reach where we're at right here. I have a better diagram of that. For some reason, whenever, whenever I am, see how much clearer this is? This is the TIFF. This is the way it appears in the book. Mr. Explain. But whenever I put it into the Word document and then change it over to a PDF, then that's what I'm getting. This I thought it was the JPEG, but it's not. It's just the way that the... I tried to adjust the documentation, just couldn't fix it. It's just the way it is in the PDF form. Okay. So th this, in order, if you're going to understand how God chose us in Christ before the foundations of the world, this is the lesson right here on how, you're, on how you can see that. And then you're also going to see where our rewards really originate. So in the beginning, we have God, the Word, heaven, and creation, all things. Last Adam, first Adam. These two realms are created. They are not real. The time and space are illusions. They are not real. I know how that sounds. Standing inside the earth, they appear to be real. But you are a God in God's infinite realm. And everything that happened in the heavens, everything that happened in the earth, is past tense. Kind of the way that the Word was with God and the Word was God, the past tense. They're one. They're the same thing in this infinite realm. They're there right now. You're there right now. I'm there right now. We're members of one another in this infinite realm right now. Heaven is created. Earth is created inside of heaven. We've already covered those things, so I'm not going into them as deeply. Okay? But now you see, I'm always pointing towards the three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, right out of Genesis 1-1, but we don't talk about the veils. This is very important. And seeing them, this is the simplest diagram in its simplest form. This is the code breaker, right here, seeing the three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water. Then whenever you turn this diagram upwards, let me see, did I pull this one up? Yes, I did. Right here. But whenever you turn this diagram upwards, then you have a man with a spirit, soul, and a body. So the, this is in the same image of the man, Christ Jesus, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we can go, there's, there are charts full of three witness mystery sets throughout the whole Bible that follow this same pattern. Okay. So the important thing to realize here is that God in the infinite realm, with that where we're all from, is beyond the veil of time and space. It's beyond the veil of time and space. And God and his words share this relationship together. Not the world, not all creation. Okay? God and his word share. They're contained within this veil. And they are beyond the veil of time and space. So God chooses us in Christ before the beginning, before everything starts here. Everything out here is as if, as if it's suspended. Nothing moves in this realm relative to what we're looking at. Standing over here in the, in the world, 
inside of our incarnation, looking back in the infinite realm, nothing changes. If we could see the veil, then the images on the other side of the veil will be frozen motionless for all the ages to come. The only way it ever changes, we go back, we left this realm to incarnate here, and that's what appears on the veil. We, we might have a thousand, thousand incarnations in the heaven and in the earth, and they all take place within the flash of that single instant from this infinite realm perspective. So that gives God power to see the beginning and the end as the same thing. So when it says God in the beginning, and then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28, it says God is all in all. Those two things are separated only by the flash of a single moment from our perspective in this infinite realm. Satan murdered Adam, and Adam stood up, raised, full, complete, all members restored in the flash of an instant in the infinite realm. But you see this heaven and earth were created for the purpose of judgment, so that we can do things already done here in the infinite realm, in the only realm that's real. You're a God there. I'm a God there. You're a member of my body. I'm a member of your body. We are members of Adam's body. Satan murdered Adam. Guess what? We died too. This was created, heaven. Is anybody here? Oh, my, I, I was away for a second with my apologies. I opened up the uh, chat room to show you guys, and I forgot to lock it. So we had a visitor come in, explain things. And um, anyway, I'll be... Now, now the room's locked. People won't be coming in and, inter and interrupting. Kind of broke my train of thought here. So what I was explaining is that the word, which is heaven, of Genesis 1-1, just making that connection changes the way that we interpret Scripture. That was a big deal decades ago when God showed me that the word and heaven were the same thing. And that John 1-1 through three was the tabernacle form laid out in three verses of, Gen of Genesis 1 1 just amazing part of my spiritual growth happened decades ago but then the realization that God is beyond the realm of time and space and that time and space are created heaven and earth were created and we share time but we don't even share the same time over here compared because these all look like they're the same size but they're not this is infinite. This is almost infinite. And this is like a drop of water compared to heaven. So, since there's a large size differential, then the heavenly hosts, that's why Christ says that of those born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist because he's Adam. He represents the whole universe. But he that's least in the kingdom of heaven, right here, is greater than him. This is like a drop of water. Peter is the least in the kingdom of heaven, right here. Every host in the almost infinite universe is almost infinite. Every host, every God that God made in the infinite realm. Somebody asked me, a well, YouTuber from last week, was saying, why are you saying we're gods? Well, because we are gods. Those of us that have a part in Adam's recent incarnation in Genesis 3.21, when they're given human skins. So that's a different than traditional interpretation. But so whenever you see the three witnesses, God puts his finger on your shoulder, and all of a sudden, you can see it. And not, and not only can, some some of you can see it, some of you can't see it. That's the way that that's the way this stuff works. The three witnesses. That's the way it works. Some people look at it, they don't see a darn thing. Spirit, blood, water, soul, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Spirit, Soul, Body. Nope, don't see it. And whenever I, it's clear as day. For somebody that's sitting in my chair, it's clear as day. And you are likely somewhere in between and on your way to seeing it. That's what I'm trying to do is help more and more people see it. Because whenever you see it, it changes everything. So we're beginning at the beginning here for Trevor and understanding the heavenly rewards. What's the difference in the the uh, all heavenly, all the blessings that we have? in Christ Jesus and the heavenly rewards that we get at the end of each age. This is where we're beginning. We are over here. Where God's over here, everything's frozen still. God's courtroom's going. Frozen still. The incarnations in heaven and earth are being done. 
within the within the time so that God can do the judgment is for a man to die once and then the judgment right Hebrews 9 27 that's once in each age for the seventh day people while six day people people have been here the races have been here the Chinese they're RH positive they're base they're generally beardless and they have RH positive blood which means that they have the Reese monkey gene and a percentage of the seven-day people do not like myself I'm one of them O negative blood universal all you guys can use my blood but I can only use a small percentage I must have an O negative person kind of puts me in the uh, not so good of a position everybody around me great not so good for me so if you're a B positive guy you can use anybody's blood just hook them up doesn't matter what they are as long as it's clean blood so anyway cut off the track a little bit the the important part here for those that, of you that already see the three witnesses is to see that there's a relationship between God and his word and that's in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God the same was in the beginning with God in the beginning is the heaven and the earth say right here and they exist beyond the veil of time and space but heaven is created as something that's between God and men you see now you look at this side and you have this veil it's surrounding the heaven and the earth so that's what makes heaven like the earth and that's what makes heaven see the Son of God which that's what this is Christ Jesus has a relationship with God beyond the veil of time and space and with us within the veil of time and space because the Son of God is something that's between God and men he's not God and he's not man he's something between God and man this is the almost infinite universe I'm talking about here so those that are gods here you have an incarnation here and you have an incarnation here okay so when the rapture happens you're gonna realize that we're meeting the Lord in the air here and we're in the middle of a sentence here now in this in this realm here it's almost infinite the least that's what I was talking about before the, the guy broke in okay the least that's in the kingdom of heaven is Peter but he's still almost infinite here so if we could see if we weren't just a drop of water and all this was way too big for us to see then we would be able to see these hosts as constellations so it's like the Leo right and the Virgo constellations being people but they're moving in slow motion they're so big they're moving in slow motion so that we can't even tell they're moving this is where the dragon the beast and the false prophet are fighting with Michael the Archangel Michael the Archangel has cut off the head of the dragon but it has not yet hit the ground so this realm is frozen motionless it's not going to move for all the ages to come until we go back when we go past when we pass through the second veil then we're going to see it and it's going to be the same as when we were just there just a flash of a moment ago but this realm it's moving in super duper duper slow motion super 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 slow motion so that the the dragon's head was cut off back in the time of Genesis the head was cut off and it's still today not hit the ground yet the tail of the giant dragon is he dragon that giant dragons falling over because he lost his head and his tail is sweeping across the skies and as his tail in super duper duper slow motion you see as his tails crossing the sky then the the stars are falling from heaven to the earth and these are the ones that occupy the devil's children those stars are occupying the heavenly places to become the evil powers of this darkness that fell in Genesis 1 1 you see what I mean so this this little portion here is to give you a picture of what's happening with us in the earth is coinciding with what's happening in heaven in so super slow motion which is what happened whenever Satan murdered Adam over here in the infinite realm so Satan murders Adam here but three witnesses in the infinite realm everything's a singularity there's no such thing as Father Son and the Holy Spirit here the Word and God are one in the same thing here 
you're an infinite God here. But in heaven, the three witnesses of Satan here are the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Three different bodies, one being representing the spirit, soul, and the body. Just like the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit, soul, body. Okay. So we have an incarnation here, and we are on the dragon side fighting against the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Here, frozen motionless. Then we incarnated here to redo things being done here that are being redone here. So there are many, many ages that take place here in order to relive what happened here in the flash of an instant in the infinite realm. There's no such thing as time here. The way that we see time and space here, time and space here are illusions. Strange as that sounds, eventually in time, as you grow, then you'll see that those things are exactly the way that things are with the heavens, heaven, and earth. Okay, so that's where we're beginning. And then we see the breaking down of, God has shown us a singularity here to help you to make the transition from here to here. Because when, remember when I turned the diagram over? This is what you get. These three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, each having their own three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Once you see it, bam, right between the eyes. That's how it really works. So the 12 number, count them. One, two, three witnesses. These three witnesses. They're the original three. Then you have these three witnesses, these three, and these three. So if you take Peter, John, and James and give them each their three witnesses, boom, you have the twelve. Put Christ in the middle of them, and then you have the thirteenth apostle. Thirteen being the key number of Scripture. Thirty-nine books in the Old Testament. Thirty-nine, uh, Thirteen books of the Apostle Paul. Thirteen kingdom books. And the book of Acts is this veil that's right here. Already kind of, I went through that kind of quickly. Because those things have already been covered. Okay, here we see the heaven transformed in, in, or broken into the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Characterized as the last Adam. First Adam. Last Adam. But both still Adam. That's the important thing to realize. Who Paul characterizes as Christ Jesus. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The heavenly man, 1 Timothy 2.5. The heavenly man, Christ Jesus. Between God and men. Okay. So the key here is that God's infinite realm, which is the only realm that is real, is beyond the realm of time and space where God chose us before the foundations of the world. Before the foundation of the world. God is able to do that because of the relationship that he has with his word beyond the realm of time and space where you are too. You have an incarnation here and you have an incarnation here in time and space beyond this veil. Okay, it's kind of like spirit, soul, and body. The mysteries of that are understood by understanding the relationships of the three witnesses of Genesis 1-1. As amazing as that sounds. Okay, now, the church maturing under the head of Christ. The church maturing. You're looking at a diagram depicting the body of Christ maturing under Christ as the head of the corner. The head of the corner, more accurately understood as the capstone of the pyramid. So a good way to envision this is turn it upside down and start building it from the bottom to the top like a snow cone. Turn it upside down, it's a heavenly pyramid, and this heavenly pyramid mirrors the mountain of God in the infinite realm. Christ at the top. Apostles and prophets are right below. You recognize these terms? Ephesians chapter 4, start at verse 11. Apostles and prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. They're the ones that occupy the higher echelons, the higher levels of what is like the mountain of God, but it's in heaven. This is the heavenly counterpart to the mountain of God in the infinite realm. Built with Christ as the capstone. So here's the ver here's a, uh, from the passage of Ephesians 2. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints in our God's household, having been built upon the foundation of the prophets. See, imagine that this is upside down and it's being built from the bottom up. That means that the bottom rungs are what are being built today. That the end of this 
mystery time that contains the mystery, the dispensation of God's grace. This is where the one body, you obey the gospel, boom, this is where you go. And then depending on your rewards, you rise higher and higher and higher up in here until you're up. But you want to be right next to Paul, right under the head of Christ. So what determines what's ha what happens here in our placement is governed by what happened here in the infinite realm during the satanic rebellion. We're doing things, Ecclesiastes 1, start at 9, what we've already done. These things are happening over and over and over again. You have winners. You have losers. You have Satan's side that are perpetrators, murderers. And then you have the other side of the coin of the Adam side. That's the victims. Members of Adam's body are the victims. We're the ones being called by, uh, by, by God through the gospel. Members of Satan's body. The ones that are unredeemable. Those are the sons of they're, they're, uh, we're the mystery of Christ people. They're the mystery of iniquity people. They're the bad guys, black hats. We're the good guys, white hats. However you want to see it. But depending on what happened back here is how we are being arranged right here. God's household being built upon the foundation of the prophets. Christ himself being the corner stone. Now that's how the trans it's translated, but it's not the cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple of God, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the spirit. A <laughs> building of God over here in the mountain of God. That's what Paul's saying on and the, well, I'm going to mention that down here below. I'm trying not to get ahead of myself. Because on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven, it's not a complete picture of things. That's what Christ taught Israel as part of kingdom doctrine. But it's not the whole story. Things are happening on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in the infinite realm. There's three witnesses, but according to the law, two or three witnesses are required, right? Sometimes God only gives the two witnesses, the heaven and the earth witnesses. For example, Christ came in water and in blood. Not in water only, but water and in blood. See these two realms? Christ coming in water and in blood? See, you can see it. God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. You can see it in the diagrams that are color-coded. From Colossians 1. Okay. So this is where we are. Those that get the most rewards go to the top. Those with the, and the ones that have the cleanest linen, the garment that we're wearing. I'm going to get, I'm going to show you that, those things in here in just a minute. These are the ones that go to the top. Those that participate in the earth and the earthly things that you get the wood, hay, and the straw from 1 Corinthians 3. You want the precious stone, the gold, silver, and the precious stones. You do not want the wood, hay, and the straw. You want the things that are of the spirit, not the things that are of the earth. Things of the earth, these things we're going to put on the altar at the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to put them right on the altar, our works. Everybody walking in, I was mentioning that last week. Everybody looks the same before the judgment. Everybody's carrying something. They put that on the altar, that's their works. Some are good, some are not good. You want the good works. The kind of work that Sandy is talking about. But she's standing between me and children, or the way I view it, between me and the children, the infants, babes in Christ. And since she is seeing these things new, it's easier, way, way easier when you're seeing these things new and you have a tutor to be able to then dispense these things for those that are just learned, just finding out about the three witnesses. There's a definite need for that. The mystery explained is like a manual. And people, they start reading and go, man, this seems so complicated. It's the manual. We need lots of books from Sandy, from, from Brian, from Trevor, for you guys from your different perspectives. Books. Happy to help you co-write them if you want me to. Or to endorse it if you want me to. Whatever that you want me to. Because God did show these things to me first. I did not get the, any of this from anybody else. It just wasn't around. I looked for it from other people, but was never able to, to, to find a shortcut 
where somebody had done some of the work first. You have that ability. You have that opportunity right now in these mystery lessons that are going on. Okay, so you can see us as a building. And then what we're doing, I'm going to ask, then when we get, when I build up this foundation here for understanding precept upon precept, then we're going to look at Trevor's question again and then answer it simply. Then you'll see it was more difficult to see the answer without this foundation being laid first. That's the purpose of the lesson. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Greek term. It's kind of a long word, number 204. Comprised of two wor root words, and this is the word for the cornerstone. You see where the asterisk is right here? Cornerstone. It's cornerstone. Two words. And comprised of two words, akron, the farthest bounds, the uppermost parts, the end, the highest, the extreme, and gonia, the corner, the angle, the top extreme angle. So embedded in the Greek and in the root words within this word, then you can see the pyramid, which is the, the column, the altar that was built in the land of Egypt. Whenever you're approaching the promised land from the east, as you're going to go right through Egypt, which is t t the sign, the t t uh, typical of the world. And every step that you take from the Nile and the Great Pyramid is a step towards the Promised Land where the veil is the Jordan River showed you that in previous answering uh, previous questions okay so tie everything together and Jesus Christ is the stone rejected by the builders who is the head uppermost part of the corner or the capstone of the heavenly pyramid he is the foundation stone but we're imagining that pyramid being built on its head beginning the foundation with Christ then Paul then Barnabas then Titus then the pastors then the evangelists in reverse order coming down so what I do mentally in my mind now that this is pulled up I want to demonstrate that for you guys pull this guy up right here whenever you turn this over this way and you can make this a timeline. Christ walking 2,000 years ago. The Apostle Paul, the prophets, 2,000 years ago. Fewer people. Lots of people. This is 2,000 years that the body of Christ is being born. Paul being the first. Christ being the foundation. So the things that I'm showing you about God's three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water, you can see it right in this diagram. Those that are living in Paul's day, they would see these things much more easily. They're the more mature members of Christ's body. They were sent here on purpose. They walked over the earth just after the time of Christ and during the time of Paul. They are the mature members from the infinite realm that God chose to be first. So now, as time goes on, yes, there's more people. Here we are in 2020. Lots and lots more people, but what we're looking at at the bottom of the pyramid are the common stones, the more common stones. These people that lived in Paul's day, they lived before the scriptures were completed. They were at a disadvantage. They didn't have a Bible that we can open up and see the 66 books and see the 13 books of the Apostle Paul. The perfect that came, the perfect illustrated God's word in one document one living document they didn't have that so God seeing that things were on they were going to be on level we've got the advantage of having the word he gave them the the prophets those that spoke in tongues that means that whenever they spoke everybody heard in their own language by the way that's not vain babbling vain babbling is just vain, vain babbling done by denominations they don't even know what's going on Whenever everybody hears in their own language from a single speaker and they hear in their own dialect of their own language, it's the hearing part that's the tongues. That's the language that we speak in heaven. Everybody hears in their own language. It's universal. 
whether you're German, French, Italian, doesn't matter. We all hear in our own language and we all hear in our own dialect. Anything that's said, that's the way it was back on the day of Pentecost. They didn't have the completed word yet. That's the way it was in the churches, the Corinthian church particularly, because they had members of the kingdom bride and the mystery body together. The prophetic bride, they're down here. They're not even in the pyramid yet. That's why they stand on the sea of glass. So once you see the three witnesses, then you, in each of these diagrams, then you can see other diagrams within them. Okay. So we are being fitted together as this building right here. The ones with the greatest rewards are the guys near the top. And those that are down here that are seeing this, this mystery, seeing God's wisdom, God is allowing us to see his wisdom. This is his stuff. He's using me to help you to see it. And he's got to tap you on the shoulder just like he did me. And when you go to show it to other people, some people are just not going to see it. They're going to think you're out of your mind. They go, well, I read the Bible many times. I didn't see any of this stuff. Some people you show it to the first time and they see it. And they go, man, because this is God's stuff. And God chooses who's mature, who's not mature. He builds us up and lets some of us see it. To ascend high and between now and the end of this age we have the greatest opportunity to get from down here almost to the top after the new heaven and new earth comes if you're down here you're gonna go ages and ages and ages and be in this nearly the same spot you can only ascend very very slowly after in the new heaven and new earth we have advantages now in this time of darkness that's what I was saying earlier blessed are those who see these things in the ages to come I mean it's great stuff the universe becomes a ball of light. They can't even comprehend the darkness of what it means. Or a world that is covered with water. They like we, we can see the earth as a water witness. Because we are living during this time, during this evil age. But in the new heaven and new earth, there's no sea. There are only lakes, there's no sea. It's not going to be as evident as it is now. There's same some things that we have an advantage of being the first down here living under the veil of darkness and there are disadvantages also so you're like a seed that's been put into the ground and stomped on and now you in order to begin the growth you have to push out and actually reach up to so that your branches you know your little bitty twig of a leaf that starts can see can be in the light so that you can begin to grow so we have disadvantages here too but those that overcome here have the greatest opportunity to go from here all the way up to here see now that it's become evident to me, as a side note, the black star is almost here. We know it's almost here because the earthquake stopped. We've only had one seven magnitude earthquake on this planet, November the 14th, 2019, since July the 14th of last year. That's not right. We should have one every 20 to 21 days. This is telling me it's time to pick up the pace on this part because whenever we get on the other side of that veil, None of these things of this world are going to matter anymore. These things of the three witnesses are going to be top priority. These, this is what you're going to wish that you had between your ears when you get there. Very, very important. It would be negligent of me knowing what God has given me. So God gives you more knowledge. He gives you more grace. Then he puts more expectation on you. He gives you ten talents. He expects you to go invest them and make a hundred. If he gives you just one, he expects you to make ten. Right? Does that make sense? Well, I'm one of the guys that God gave the ten talents. He's expecting more. So here I am. Okay. So we went through the, the, uh, the Greek here. And look at the diagram again to realize Christ is the first stone laid in a grand heavenly pyramid that is being built from the top down men from the world below are being reunited with their greater angel halves and restored to become living souls as citizens of heaven in the almost infinite realm we are seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus as finished products blessed with gifts from God that were already ours in the infinite realm where we are gods that's the thing to realize 
There's nothing new here. Like Ecclesiastes says, there's nothing new under the sun. The rewards that you're receiving are the rewards of the things you already had in the infinite realm. But there's already a pecking order of us in the infinite realm. Are we going to go back into the infinite realm as completely restored in the exact same order? Or are we going to capitalize on this opportunity to build ourselves up, heavenly rewards, not earthly rewards, heavenly rewards, so that we have a higher standing in God's infinite realm when we return there. If so, if we're going to do that, we're going to do that by ascending in this pyramid, the heavenly pyramid. That's the important part that I'm trying to convey here from beginning with Trevor's question. Okay, so we're seated in the heavenly places uh, as finished products. I keep, okay. I keep skipping around and losing my place. And, and my apologies, I'm I'm uh having issues here and I'm uh I'm doing the, the very best that I can. Okay. So oh remember always the Christ teaching is incomplete. Seems like that I already read this to you. But I didn't. Okay. That's what I mean I was getting ahead of myself. Okay. And uh, that the phrase is incomplete. The things for Christ's body members are always done on earth as they are in heaven as it is in God's infinite realm. In a body, soul, spirit fashion. With Christ, heaven, word, incarnate in our souls. And God incarnate in us as living tabernacles. Now there's a diagram that I can pull up to help you to see that. And that diagram is right here. You notice the same pattern? Spirit blood water hearing the word in the beginning you as the outer court this is when you familiar yourself familiarize yourself with the court the holy place and the holy of holies that pattern three witness pattern god heaven earth same pattern now we're going to turn it downward and this is your soul your spirit and your body you have the spirit of god's word from the Father. You have faith of Jesus, which is a possession. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 26 is what's coming to mind. And then the Holy Spirit of promise in Ephesians 1 13. The Holy Spirit of promise, this makes up and comprises the new inner man that goes and resides right here. So the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your soul encases the Son, for He dwells in your bosom. And then the Father in your spirit. The three witnesses of the Word incarnate inside of you. This is Christ Jesus right here, the incarnation of heaven in you, happening when you obey the gospel. It's not God's foreknowledge that's the power of God. It's the gospel that's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. He has heaven incarnate inside of him. But that's not all. So you have heaven inside of you right here. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Christ in you. The hope of glory. This mystery among the Gentiles. Colossians 1. But then, that's when, whenever we realize that God is in Christ. Reconciling the world to himself. So you have God laying sideways inside his son because his son is the true tabernacle. The true tabernacle in heaven where God is seated right now. The way he's seated in heaven, even though heaven and the highest heaven can't contain him, we'll get into that one day. It's because God pushed that second veil that encases his throne. So when you're standing before in heaven looking at God, you're looking into the infinite realm. He's on the other side of that veil. The veil is moving over his face like a giant typewriter ribbon. God who was, past. God who was to come, future. God who is, is right now. When God looks left or right, he's looking to the future or the past. He's seeking information from the prophet, his prophet, God to come. Or his priest, God who was. In the same image of Elijah and Moses. Same thing Christ does in the present. With Elijah from the future 
and Moses representative of the past. So God is inside his true tabernacle. So whenever we present the gospel to someone, this is what we have in us. Christ incarnate in us and God incarnate in him. And we, God uses us by sending the preacher, right? Romans 10, 17. He sends the preacher and we have, guess what? The seed, the Holy Spirit in us, the spirit of the word is in us. We preach the gospel and the Holy Spirit convicts the believer. And then this happens to them. And God takes up residence in them and off they go. The thing is, is that some members are mature and some members are not. So I have these, uh, these verses. I, I want to read them over here and we can begin right here with the mature we do speak wisdom who are mature I'm sorry we we do speak wisdom among those who are mature a wisdom however not of this age nor of the rulers of this age who are passing away but we speak God's wisdom in a mystery the hidden which God predestined before the ages to our glory the wisdom which the rulers of this age has, um, which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they understood it, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. Right here is where it's important to see that the gospel of the kingdom was part of the plan all along. The gospel of the kingdom. Where the king was killed. And then Israel committed the transgression. Just like Eve committed the transgression in the garden. It was already known beforehand that Eve was going to transgress. It was already known beforehand that Israel was going to transgress. The benefactors are the Gentiles who receive the gospel of the grace of God. And now we have Christ incarnate in us and God incarnate in him so that we can judge the world and the angels while Peter, John, and James and all those kingdom disciples are standing on the sea of glass serving the Lamb. They think that's the cat's meow. They think that's as high as you can get serving the lamb. You're standing in front of the lamb. You're, that's it. No, wrong. You really want to be baptized inside the lamb of Revelation. That's where we are in Revelation. But the, the important thing here is that is, is to recognize this body, this group within the body of Christ. Those who are mature. Because we can contrast that a bit low on ram let's see we can contrast that paul writes in the next chapter these corinthians first corinthians 3 and i brethren could not speak to you as spiritual men but as to men of flesh as infants in christ i gave you milk to drink not solid food for you were not yet able to receive it indeed even now you are not able for you are still fleshy for since there is jealousy and strife among you you are not now you are not fleshy oh he's asking a question are you not fleshy and are you not walking like mere men for when one says i'm a paul i'm apollos i'm a this and that are you not as mere men and the thing to realize here is paul is addressing members of the mystery body of christ and the kingdom bride at the same time go back to the first chapter you see he's talking to, about chloe's people He's talking about people that are saying, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, I'm of here, I'm of there. Those because they were baptized in water by Peter. Some were baptized by Paul. Paul says that he baptized some of them, house of Stephanus and this and that. Why did he do that? Because Paul is preaching the gospel of the kingdom to the Jew first, and then he's preaching the gospel of the grace of God to the Gentiles and the Jews that are among them. You see? So you have to realize there are mature members of Christ's body and there are infants in Christ. And what, I'm, what I try to do here in laying down the foundations of the two Gospels, the two churches, I'm trying to help the babes in Christ to move closer and closer to those who are mature. That's what it's about. So when your eyes first open as an infant, dealing with what's in the world is very difficult. And first, and as a child, when you first learn to walk, you're going to bruise your knees. You're going to fall down a bunch. 
That's why it's a good. It's good that you're small, right? I mean, you're a little kid. You fall. You don't have far to fall. And the taller you get, the more sure-footed you are. And then you know you're you're okay. You can take the training wheels off and you can run. You know later, but first you have to go through the infant stage. And the way one way that you're going to do that is reading God's word. Obviously, it's going to be to choose your tutor wisely. Right? And then it's going to be to ask the right questions. You ask the right question, then you get from point A to point B much more rapidly. Then the question's on your mind, but then, you know, you really need to ask this question, but you don't. And then it comes to your mind, but it doesn't have as much strength. And then it, it, you don't ask the question again. And then it comes, and then after a while, the question doesn't appear into your mind at all again. That's what we do in our real life. You're, you realize that. You're going to start taking vitamins. These resolutions right after the first of the year. This is what you're going to do. Well, you tell yourself you're going to do it. And then when it, you, it comes to your mind again. But then you don't do it again. The next time it comes back weaker. Next time it comes back weaker. And then it doesn't come at all. That's the way this is. When, the, when it, your mind is inspired, you say, man, I really want to know what this means. That's when you ask your question, just like Trevor did here. Then you can be on the road to understanding what's going on. Back over here. So you have babes, you have people that are mature. Big difference. Even though both are saved, some can see these things that I'm showing you right here much easier. They, they, they take it and they, it's like they drink all the milk and they eat all the steak and they're just running. Some people, they can only deal with the milk because they're still infants. They can't go into the deeper things yet. So then... He says, these are good reasons for why I continually ask for more Bible questions and why I try to inspire those from for, who, um, for, whom, for whom Christ died to pursue ministries that help others see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight, using his three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. And before the black star arrives and our time here is over. Now let's look at your question again with these things in mind. Trevor from above, please explain the difference between the rewards that you teach about, not as beating air, to get closer to Christ, the chief cornerstone, compared to Ephesians 1.3, as it says, I have been given all spiritual blessings in Christ. The spiritual blessings that we have in Christ Jesus, beyond the veil of time and space, include the things that, we are, that are already ours in God's infinite realm. See, we have stature in God's infinite realm as mature and as infants too. Those things are carrying over here on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in the infinite realm. So those of you that never heard that phrase said that before in that way, now you have an opportunity to learn and to build upon that. Because as from infinite realm, most people cannot see God's infinite realm. Many people are transforming the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit into God. Rather than seeing those as the three witnesses of the word, where my Father God is he in, in heaven, God His name is from the heaven of Genesis 1 1. That is created. Anything created has a beginning, has an end. Okay. Okay. So, however, rewards, 1 Corinthians 3 10, we receive to start the day of the Lord at the judgment seat and at the very end of every future age include gold and silver crowns. Rings, staffs that include an array of precious stones for each object that includes a chest plate understood by the ephod from Jewish tradition. In short, the rewards we receive in bits and pieces for all the ages to come are parts of every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So I pulled pulled up some pictures of that ephod right here. If you just Google it, you can see what it looks like. See the chest plate? There's a larger one here. Chest plates, and they have different colors. These are stones. Just go back and think about the precious stones associated with the devil. Ezekiel, was it Ezekiel 28 coming to mind? Those precious stones, onyx and so forth, these are the types of stones that are in the chest plate. But these things on earth 
are testifying about things that are in heaven. We have chest plates. These precious stones, these gold, silver, and precious stones that Paul's talking about, that's where they go in our chest plate. And so there are stones that are beautiful, beautiful red stones, finished cut, blood witness stones. Those are the ones you want. The gold stones, symbols of the infinite realm, of the spirit. That's the stones that you want. You do not want the earth colored tony stones. The browns and the greens. and You don't want those. In your ephod. Those are symbols of the world. You do not want those. Okay. So that's the uh, primary report that I want to share with you. And misreport news. Two new subscribers, Shelly and William. Appreciate you guys' support very, very much. Hope that you'll join us in chat this evening. What does chat look like? That's where the uh, the that's where the fella that's where the fella popped in, right here. This is where you come to the mic. And according to Tony, he says he could see my mic moving. I don't know if it was his setting or mine, but whenever you come, I had uh, I was mentioning to uh, one of the uh, the tutor chat members. And people seem reluctant to come to the mic, which is fine. You can just you can just type right here anything that you want. Okay, but when you come to the mic, she says, "Well, my mic's locked." No, your mic's not locked. That's that. This is not saying your mic is locked. It's saying that if you click here, then you can talk in the room, and release it. You see, you can talk and release it. Talk and release. Or if you're like me and you do a lot of talking, you can click the little lock button, and that locks your that locks your mic on. So that's just the way it works. And you want to come up and you want to uh, talk. I'm talking. I do most of the talking. Just like when we had the, the, the uh, chat room back in 2011, 12. Whenever I'm in there, then usually I'm talking. Uh, people are asking questions. I'm talking. But whenever you want to talk, oh, I can turn the mic off at the moment. Then you come up here and you say join the queue. And when you do that, it's going to put you in line. So you have members down here. And when you click join the queue right here and then... Is I'm I'm the one that's talking, and I say, "Oh, look, I'm John. You have a question? Go ahead." And then I will release the mic, and then you click on your mic, and then that's how we all share in the chat room every Tuesday night, seven to nine p.m. Eastern time. You can be right here. Okay. Now that is for members that see the same way. These are for the Black Star. If I took you over to the website, this is faster. It's, it's, uh, these, are, these are typical questions that people ask. So it's remaining here as the group grows. If you want to be a newsletter person only, you're right here. See, all these buttons are now changed since I made this. They're all 2020 buttons now. Okay, You just want two bucks a month. If you want access to the newsletter, you want all of my work for the mystery report in one document to be able to go through it. Click on the links. This video link is in the newsletter right here. Everything that I did for the week, you, the posts that I did over at ChristianForums.com. You just want access to that. You don't need to chat. You don't need any of that. Then this is where you want to go. Just $25 a year. Okay. You, you subscribe today. You have access to all the, all the newsletters, even from last year. And you don't have another payment until to this date next year. And then you get access to all of those newsletters if the Black Star has, isn't here yet. Okay. Now, you decide that you want more. You start off as a $25 guy. We have a couple of those. Then you decide you want to join us in chat. You want to ask the questions. Be part of what's happening every Tuesday night. Then you click on this button here. So 25 and 25 equals this button. These are the premium programs. This is the survival group program and the newsletter program for Black Star. These are the mystery report newsletters and the tutor chat program over here on the left. And I can show you over there at the website, but I'm looking at the time and I want to keep this, you know, kind of reason, you know, not too long. Okay. So these are the new subscribers for this week. Now the number is up to 20. We have 20. This is the, and the Shelly, you're actually the last one that subscribed yesterday. It was kind of interesting to me, you know, being a numbers guy, that you were the 20th person to, to join the program, and you did it on January the 20th, 2020. I thought that was pretty cool. That makes, uh, makes me 
want to leave an asterisk by your name, but asterisks belong by those who... This is the order, pretty much, except for you guys subscribe backwards. Pretty much the order that you guys are coming in. Hey, it was Tina. I was trying to think of... Uh, you were the one that we were mentioning last week. You made a statement. And... Uh, and last week in last week's chat and Rebecca showed up two weeks ago I didn't see you last week but now she's on some type of excursion unless that's what I heard so then uh, how do you join chat room activities click on the button up there I'm gonna send you a notification email just I did like I did Shelly you'll be number 21 and then you can join us in chat because you're gonna have all the information you're gonna know where to go to register get yourself a username you're gonna have my room uh, link and then uh, you can show up there. How do you receive the misreport newsletters? Right here. Then my clarifying statements. Not going to have time to go through all these. But um, these are the statements where... I can just take care of the website for a second. This is uh, right here. My opening post. You see where I've been a member since 2004. And... Uh, so this is how it works. And he asked, his entire post appears up above. That's what I do in the newsletters. Because see how I'm chopping up his, his argument? That is really not fair to a person. You want to see the entire presentation put together as he wrote it. And then, I'm going to, I'll show you in the newsletter. First, I'll give you my opening post. And then, see, this is his entire message. After he read... The, about, this is on the the uh, the uh, the Kingdom Church, Peter's Kingdom Church, and our Mystery Body of Christ Church. They're two different churches. Some people think they're the same church. He says no, because you have mixed the two gospels. You have mixed two different gospels during two different times and tried to make them separate in this age. It's one of the reasons that I'm not, I will not be a dispensationalist dispensationalists divide things that do not need to be divided and uh, some things must be divided but uh, dispies they take and there's like 12 different kinds of dispies dispensationalists traditionals all different kinds I don't even want to get into all that but whenever they start talking about this age this church age there's no such thing as a church age we're living in the same evil age since darkness fell in Genesis 1-2 the next age will begin in Revelation 21.1. This is all one age. Throughout the, the entire Old Testament. Until you get to Revelation 21.1, we're in the same age. And people talk about the church age. There's no such thing. They are, they are confusing ages with dispensations, which are households. The dispensation of God's grace was, was given to me for you. The Apostle Paul, Ephesians three two okay and it's not that he's dis he's steward over the age of grace no such thing he's steward over the dispensation of God's grace which is the household and the dispensation of God's grace is contained within this mystery time that I'm going to get to here in a second from uh, it's kind of a toss-up whether to put Brian's down below he's asking some really really good questions not going to be able to get into all that today, but I'm, I'm going to try to. So he says, um, he says that I'm making up the kingdom bride church. Like in Christ in Matthew 16, when he says, my church. Talking about Peter and what in, in his church, Christ's church. He says, my church. And he's going to give Peter the kingdom, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And as things are loosed in heaven, they're loosed on earth, so and so, you know, so on and so forth. And the interesting thing is that. In verse 20 there, in, in uh, Matthew 16, 20, he warns the disciples to tell no one that he is the Messiah. This fellow here is trying to say that the truth that he's the Messiah is part of the gospel of the kingdom, and it is not. And he's talking about Christ coming and ruling on an earthly kingdom, which I'm sure I'm confident that many of you believe, which is a fantasy. It's not true. Pilate asked Christ about his kingdom, and he said that my kingdom is not of this world, and it's not even of this realm. If my kingdom was of this realm, then my disciples would be here fighting, because he would be talking about the war 
between Michael the Archangel and the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, where the war is happening right now. It's just stopped, frozen, motionless from our perspective. Christ knows that. That's his kingdom. It's being fought over right now. The suffering violence since the days of John the Baptist, who is Adam. Okay, so he's going on about how the gospel of the kingdom was only preached. He says the kingdom gospel preaching ended in the with the events of Matthew 12. I'm just shaking my head. Going, Where in the world do you get that? Acts chapter 8, verse 12. Philip is preaching the good news concerning the kingdom of God. Peter preaches it in Acts 2. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. The same thing John the Baptist preached with the addition of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Three baptisms. Man, I'm getting crucified for just saying there are three baptisms of the kingdom in one where we're baptized into Christ. That's a topic that we've already covered. Okay, so I'm going to go back and he's, his first statement, no, because you've mixed the two Gospels together, and then I'm going to give an answer. And my opening post to the two Gospels, the Gospel of the Kingdom, the Gospel of the Grace of God, okay, we're in the same, living in the same age, and then he's going to say, make this statement, and I'm going to go and answer that. What do you mean by church? The, he is talking about the church as if there's only one. No, those two churches met at the meeting in Jerusalem in Acts, two, in Acts 15 and Galatians 2. Peter, John, and James, Paul submitting the gospel I preached, I preached among the Gentiles to them, and in fear of failure, they're preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Christ, Paul is preaching the gospel of the grace of God to the Gentiles. He's specifically talking about the gospel of the uncircumcised. That's what he calls it. Galatians 2 7. But some people, whenever you mix the two gospels together, you see only one gospel, you see only one church, you mix it all together, you create a good news message in a church that God never sent to anybody. And that's what denominationalism is all about. He thinks that we're the bride of Christ. This word, numphy, 3565, it's rarely used in the New Testament. It's used in John 3.29. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. John the Baptist says that. The bride is Peter's kingdom bride. You have to connect the dots to be able to even know what that phrase means. Because it's not clearly spoken. I agree on that. But Paul never uses this term once. He never causes the bride. Over and over again he causes the body. Because we are the body. There's a body and there's a bride. The bride was seen. Hosea 2. Start at 19. The Lord says he's going to betroth Israel to himself. That makes Israel the bride. See, there's a difference between a bride and a wife, according to Jewish tradition. As soon as you give your word, your commitment to the concubine, then she becomes your bride. But she's betrothed to you. But that's official title. It changes with your word by your commitment. It's when you go through the official ceremony, you become the wife. In the Old Testament, there are, you'll see David had so many wives and so many concubines. These concubines are brides. Verbal commitment. The ones that went through the ceremony, they're the wives. So the marriage supper of the Lamb makes them members of the Lamb, but they're not there yet. They are betrothed. They are called the bride, just like exactly like John the Baptist said. Okay, so you're going to see me which is, this is a duplicate of what is done on the website over here that I just showed you. Now, I encourage you to go to ChristianForums.com, see it right here, and register as a brand new member. And you can go, and I go to the dispensationalism room, not because I'm a dispensationalist, but because those are the brightest of the people that I've debated against. I'm going there looking for a fight. I'm looking for them to say, I don't see it. And then to give their arguments, because then you can see how I'm defending the two Gospels, the two churches, the four baptisms, explanations. That's what it's about. I'm not talking as much now about the uh, persecution, because you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be like Donald Trump with the, with, the, with the swamp all over your back trying to impeach you for nothing, for doing absolutely nothing, for doing your job. So that's the way that I'm seeing it. If there's any uh, lefty Clinton... Uh, Biden people, they're listening to me. Then you probably just turned it. You probably just turned everything off. But uh, it is what it is. I mean, I didn't vote for Trump, but 
what's what's going to happen over there what's happening today starting at one o'clock is going to send many of the people in the middle the undecided the independents trump's way and that's the difference in pelosi having the gavel and not because of the recent election so i see the gavel going back to um the republicans so anyway not only am I going to use scripture, I'm going to use diagrams from my book, The Mystery Explained. So if you become a member here, you can read my posts before they're actually posted in, out in the newsletter. And you have the opportunity to participate in what's going, what's going on too. So what I want to do right now, I have some more windows pulled up looking at my time. And here's, oh, if uh, you're blessed by this, you remember, I hope you'll send me a testimonial. This is a little testimonial section from those. From David, from Brian, and Trevor. I don't see one in here from Trevor. If you want to write one, Kathy, lovely lady right here. She sees it, she's like a little kid. She has the, the kind of enthusiasm that I had. I, I, it, it, it's just phenomenal. Because so you, you can feel it. You can sense it in, the, in our, in our uh, discourse back and forth. She's struck by it like I was. She's she's the one that's talking about um, writing a book, and that's she she wrote this. This is my words back to her, but she wrote about the commitment, and she's sharing it with her with members of her family. And it's really exciting when you first come to see it. It's like the lights all of a sudden come on. You're stumbling around in the dark, and all of a sudden you can see what's going on. It's like a blind person being given light. It's really that's that's the the good analogy from what Christ is doing. When he's walking around the four Gospels and he's he taking mud and rubbing it in their eyes. You know, water from the well and the mud. And then, boom, they can see again. That's what it's like. It really is. It's exciting whenever someone comes to see it. So I say, I hope that even though these videos are kind of long, they're, they're, they contain milk and they contain meat. And some of them you'll have to see over and over again to be able to catch the point, to see around that corner so that you can take the step and then to make it, next step up the mountain which is really what it is every step is uphill seeing the truth of god's living word it's uphill <laughs> makes it kind of hard um but it's supposed to be hard it's supposed to be work we're supposed to labor as the farmer in the field in expectation and hope of a harvest that's the way we're supposed that's the way it's supposed to be and seeing the body of christ as a building so that makes us laborers fellow laborers working together for the building up of the body it's supposed to be work it's supposed to be hard and expect persecution and a lot of what is happening to me personally right here some of it is just terrible what's happening but a lot of that is going to be because of the persecution because of my decision and Dave's decision Dave's going through a lot to help he inspired me through our communications to begin this program last December and it was last December whenever this plague started that is really really knocking me down at this uh, at this time so when was God's word divided into Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? That's when. That's what Brian asked right here. And looking at the time, I don't want this to be two hours. So you're going to, want to get your hands on this newsletter. Okay, uh, how do we prove that the wolf lays down with the lamb in this age? Good question. So Elijah's restoring all things, blah, blah, blah. Here's the question. And then... Uh, this is written by somebody else and uh, Brian has taken up he's been following my work since 2013 a lot longer than than most and now he does what I do he goes to the Bible boards and the way you sharpen your skills is by defending the truth of God's Word by you look at the objection you look at the uh, the counter arguments the rebuttals and then you have to search the God's Word and put together the arguments and it's through that process that you are going to grow spiritually and not only that you're doing it not just for yourself you're doing it and showing someone else there's only so much that you're going to learn by reading the Bible beyond that then you're going to need a tutor that's why Paul says you may have countless tutors first Corinthians chapter 4 verse was a 15 and uh, but then he but he is going to be your father in Christ through the gospel well, how's that happen? Because 
God gave Paul our gospel first. It was given to him by revelation of Jesus Christ, Galatians 1, start 11. Which means that when I preach you the gospel, it comes through a chain. Somebody preached me the gospel, somebody preached them the gospel, somebody preached them the gospel, all the way back to Paul, originating with Paul. That's what makes him the first, which that's what it means. That's what the, the term, the protos, the first. That's what it means. All goes back to Paul. So this is the argument he received from somebody else. And the, a lot of the things that I'm showing Brian and you guys looking over our shoulder is about David ruling on the earth. Ephesians, I'm sorry, Ephesians. Ezekiel chapter 34, start at verse 23. And how that's true. And how he's going to be restored again for the new heaven and the new earth. So then Brian writes back. And then you see, no, uh, return to Isaiah 11. See, because Brian sees a lot of things, more than the average person. But then he wants to see more. And as long as you want to see more, you're going to ask questions. As long as you have somebody that you can go to to ask the question, that's wisdom. That's how you get from point A to point B much more rapidly. So on the one side, you're going to be reading God's Word. You're going to read from the Pauline Epistles every day. The Pauline Epistles. The reason is because all of God's Word is living. It's a living Word with a spirit, soul, and a body. I've already shown you that. But part of the Scriptures are active. The part that's active is that's where you get the manna. That's where you get the bread from. And that's for you, being a member of Christ's body, that's Pauline epistles. It doesn't make Paul any better than anybody else. It doesn't make any better than Moses, who is the steward over Israel, who dispensed Mosaic law. The law and the prophets came from Moses. It doesn't make him better than the Lord God, right, who gave that stuff to him. Everything that Paul received, he received through revelation of Jesus Christ. The one receiving is not greater than the one who is giving. So some people think that I'm trying to elevate Paul above Christ. No way. Christ died for Paul like Christ died for me and you. Nobody, can, there's only one door between you and God, and that's through Christ. That's it. No, you can't. He's between man, uh, uh, between God and men. Because he's something between God and men. You cannot elevate men over the word of God. It doesn't happen that way. So sometimes people create straw man arguments by making attacks like that. It's usually with a question. And then they answer their own question, but it has nothing to do with what you said. It's a straw man argument in a nutshell. But um, sometimes they just accuse you of something that's of you saying something that you never said. It's reminding me of uh, with Trump again. Whenever he said... Do us a favor, we've been through a lot, and which he had just gone through. It was a day after the Mueller report fell on his face. On the 24th of July, and then the 25th of July, he's having this thing saying, hey, well, the Democrats just say, no, you're saying that you're wanting to spy on your political opponent, whenever what he really meant was, see, what they did is they created a straw man argument, they answered themselves, and they're trying to do this impeachment based upon that argument. And it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. The Senate sees through it. It's not going to work. It's going to happen. This thing is going to be over before you know it. And Democrats are going to be crying like babies. Watch and see. What I'm saying is not true. And watch and see if Pelosi didn't open the door for Clinton. That's why she withheld the... That's why she withheld... Everybody's wondering, well, she knows that he's not going to move from office. Why did she withhold those uh, articles? It's because Warren and the others... Bernie, they're going to be tied up doing this now because she held it a month. It would have been over by now. And they're, she was trying to infringe on them and on the uh, on the uh, the president's address. That's what she wanted to do. But that what she's setting it up for, she's putting trying to put Biden in the driver's seat by doing that. And it seems to me, I haven't read this anywhere or seen it anywhere, it seems to me that Clinton is waiting in the wings to be the vice president. That's what they're trying to do. Build a super ticket with Clinton and then activate the Clinton machine, right? But they want to, they, they, they don't want to do this too soon because they'll have to answer all these questions from the other Democrats about the, and they're going to have to face it anyway, which is why I could all, I could be wrong. It's, it could be just a feeling, you know, I could be wrong, but it looks like that's what they're doing. And um, if you think about it, it's pretty deceit, it's de de deception that they're doing they're trying to change it's funny how pelosi and the dems the swamp 
D.C. swamp. They're trying to change the 2016 election and the 2020 election, which is exactly what they're accusing Trump of doing. And it seems like in every case that they are doing and lying and scheming and doing the exact same things that they're saying Trump's doing whenever he is the guy. And I, like I said, I didn't vote for him, but I'm admiring his work. I'm looking at, at, at Iran. You think that number two Iranian leader is ready to go jump in his car and go right around Iraq? I don't think so. You saw what happened to the last guy. Iraq, they're, they're, they're like little puppies now because of what Trump did. And uh, yeah, they're launching an attack here and there. It's like Pelosi that's trying to play to the base. That's the same thing Ayatollah is doing over there. He's trying to do that, but he doesn't want to angry the giant. Over there in the United States, there's no way because they're, they're so scared of Trump, they can't stand it. And I kind of like that. It reminds me of Reagan in that way. Okay, so, these oh, this is uh, the Christian debate. And um, this is where, this could easily be put up in the clarifying statements. My week, this week, this, just unbelievable what had to go on this week. And there was not, not as much time for me to go out on other people's topics and to debate them, you know, to present counter arguments to what they did. But this right here, I just posted the, the, uh, the four baptisms link, just posted it yesterday. And they started attacking me already. So, hey, wait a minute. This is a good opportunity to present my counter arguments. To these fellows right here the, and and this guy here this is his entire argument he says you know the four baptisms this is an erroneous teaching it's been refuted it's long ago been refuted and i'm thinking well yeah well then that's that's why it's so easy for you to refute if you've already done the work this is a fellow that used to debate with me back in 2004 5 and 6 right here but some people really believe that their reputation just like a pharisee like a high priest or something. They think that they're going to come out and just point fingers and say, this has been refuted and everybody's going to, the readers are going to be influenced by that. And if readers are influenced by that, then they're fools. Because this guy is quoting Galatians. Paul, what, what, everything that Paul is saying is true. This is what he says right here. He says, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach another gospel than you, that to you than what we have preached to you. That's the important part, that we have preached to you, which is the gospel of the grace of God. If anybody preaches to you another gospel, because God's already chosen you, and you are in Christ, and you're seated in heavenly places, you're done. So if somebody preaches you any other gospel, then they're accursed. And who is Peter, who is he talking about specifically? Paul is talking about, not people that are preaching the devil. He's talking about people that are preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And tell them that they have to be circumcised. Peter, John, and James. That's who he's talking about. That's why, by revelation, that Paul was sent to Jerusalem to submit his gospel to the uncircumcised. He, he characterized it as this gospel I preach among the Gentiles. He calls it the gospel to the uncircumcised. Well, everything that this fellow is saying is absolutely true of the gospel of the grace of God. If you think that's the only gospel, but it's not. Go back and you're going to see the gospel of the kingdom. And you're going to see three baptisms. The baptism of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I lay everything out here. Okay. You got people in Acts 19, 1 through 6. In verse 3, they only have the baptism of John. That's all they have. So Paul tells them about Jesus Christ. And then in verse 5 there, 19, 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the of Jesus Christ because he's the son. They never heard of the Holy Spirit either. He says, then he went and laid hands on them and then they received the Holy Spirit. Guess what? That's the gospel of the kingdom. That's the program for the gospel of the kingdom. Paul is preaching the gospel of the kingdom. He says he's preaching the kingdom in Acts 20, verse 24 through 27. He does it in verse 25 there. But he says, you're, going, you're no longer going to see my face. So what he did for these disciples in Acts 19, he doesn't do anymore after the close of Acts. That's the thing to realize. Okay, so this guy here is making a good sound argument if there's only one gospel and it's the gospel of the grace of God. Thing is, gospel of the kingdom is preached right out of the starting gate. And so then I, I just say to him, maybe it's a good, good idea to quote from the opening post and present your rebuttal argument 
using statements supported by Scripture. Quoting the entire Bible in the absence of interpretation is throwing effort after foolishness. And so many people do that. They quote my entire post and then they quote an entire chapter and they only use a sentence of commentary, which is about what this guy did. No, you have to go back. You better... So this guy's boasting as if he's already fought the battle. Whenever he hasn't even put his armor on yet. You know, and that's from a spiritual perspective when you know the truth. This is embarrassing. But if you can't see the whole truth, you're mixing the two Gospels together. And it's the only one Gospel is the Gospel of the Grace of God. He thinks he's doing the right thing. And this guy's been doing that on this website for a decade. He hasn't grown one iota since I saw him the last time. Matter of fact, my old topic, if I went and found it, I would probably find that he made the exact same argument a decade later. Almost a decade. 2004. No, more than a decade ago. 2004 to 2020. And he's still making the same argument. And it's a little bit embarrassing what I would be reading to you if you go and if you go and read what he writes to me next he's gonna say well he knows that the reader he, he's accounting for the, re the reader being educated so he doesn't have to make a good argument and that's foolishness you see how my answers are always very very long and they're com they're complex from each different angle multifaceted that's because you're going the extra mile so I have to ask him do you see two Gospels in the New Testament do you see the two churches? And if you're answering no, that would explain why he's mixing the two together. So the top stories of the week, the voices of, and there's a lot of this going around right now. This is part of the pattern. Some people think they're living at the end of the age because of what's happening right now, but we're not. We're living at the end of the mystery time, the soul period that mirrors the end of the age. It mirrors it like your soul mirrors the body. So there's persecution going on everywhere around the world. I mean, David sent in, I don't know how many articles on just on persecution, martyrs, people that are being killed for being just for being Christians. Okay. So you're going to see some related, this is the, uh, see these other stories. And then remind yourself that you're an overcomer to help others overcome too. Christian persecution on the rise. Korea, Muslims to blame. The the uh, interesting part, this is a little bit outside the box here. When you're looking at what's happening over there in the east, Korea, Christians, God never sent the word of God. He never sent the gospel, the grace of God to Orientals. I know how that sounds. Now, if you have a mix of, of Oriental and, and Seventh-day people blood, then that's a different case. Talking about 100% RH positive. Everybody in your family's RH positive. Beardless. Okay. These are ancient races that have been here a long, long. Six day people. Your ancestors were made in Genesis 1, 26 through 28. You are going forth, being fruitful and multiplying. You were already here when Adam was put here in Genesis 3, 21. Your people were already here. You, six-day people, you can be born over and over again in a single age. You're on an evolutionary spiral upwards that's getting wider and wider and wider. You're getting to be more and more and more. Evolution and creation are, are true. Both of them are true. They're running parallel side by side. The gospel is for seventh-day people. The six-day people are all victims. They're all members of Adam's body when he was created the first day he was created in the infinite realm. The seventh day people are gods like Adam who incarnated into him who died on the day Satan killed him. Now I've already covered that. I went through it kind of quick, but that's the truth of it. So you have people to whom the word of God, the gospel of grace of God was never sent who are delusional, who think they're saved and they're not, and they're carrying out. They are being victimized by the Six-day people over there, their own people, they're being victimized by for accepting seventh-day teaching. Why? Because that's what happened in the infinite realm. The deception, the destruction that was taking place inside of Adam's body. The fight because of what was being told by the seventh-day people who incarnated inside of him. Created the division and the destruction. 
we're seeing the recreation of that in the earth in time through all these different incarnations that are happening interactions between gods record level of attacks on European Christian sites see this is the trend almost all of these could be put in the signs of the time seven ways to read the Bible when you're not feeling it for me very important part of my growth year after year after year after year was reading from God's Word from the Pauline epistles I started at Romans 1 and I went to Philemon started at Romans 1 went to Philemon Romans 1 Philemon more than a hundred times every single day every single day that builds up the new man inside of you being renewed daily is the renewing comes from the active Word of God being digested in you even though you're reading the same words that you've read over and over again you say well huh? some people think I have a, a, a photographic memory but I don't but it's really good I'm good mind you know good component parts but not photographic but when you've read something a hundred more than a hundred times then there's you know eventually it's the stuff sinks in okay try a new Bible translation new American Standard or if you want the received text the old Egyptian manuscripts new American Standard it's the best translation I can find modern new King James Version the received text translation Antiochian manuscripts those my view two best and um, please forgive me if you feel offended but the old King James the Wycliffe I mean there, there's some places where the Wycliffe Bible is the only Bible that has it right and the Young's Bible the one that Brian uses there are verses in there that only that Bible has right I mean there are exceptions to the rule of what I'm telling you and I in my book the mystery explained I quote from the Wycliffe Bible and it turns out that I should have used the Young's, which I didn't even realize. There's so many different translations. Brian showed me. Brian, that's one of the gifts that you've given me, is whenever I give the analysis, reading directly from the, the Byzantine manuscripts, looking directly at the Greek, reading the Greek, I know exactly what it says, that the three are into the one. It's literally exactly what it says, word, word, word for word. It's mistranslated by the uh, and, and your Bible is the one that added exactly exactly word for word the way that I is the way that I see it in reading the Greek actually reading the Greek um so there are things that I'm going to agree with here I mean go, as long as you're getting enough of the Pauline epistles the whole Bible is good for you but if you think that you're going to be built up the new man inside of you by reading from the Old Testament and from the kingdom epistles exclusively it is not going to happen you're gonna be spinning your wheels stuck in the mud not going anywhere Pauline epistles it's like the juice it's the good stuff the balanced diet everything that you need to make it grow big and strong in the Pauline epistles and when you hold up the Bible and hold up the Pauline epistles between your fingers is very thin those 13 books are very very thin uh, give, and remember to give yourself grace lots of good lessons in the information that's being shared signs of the times ocean temperatures at the highest ever and it's only going to get higher as the black star gets closer it's the earthquake pattern that changed whenever I saw it, it's gone six it's going six months without with only one seven magnitude earthquake the black star is almost here that's what I was telling people years ago that's not these big quakes that's gonna be when the black star gets here it's when we have the lack of earthquakes the reason is because of what's going on in earth mantle transition zone it grows it separates the plates they're floating so that whenever the giant event happens when the buoyancy barriers break the world is going to change in a day that's destruction destruction that Paul's talking about and it, it, it you can interpret it two different ways as the black star this could be the day that it happens is the during the geological pole shift that the black star initiates and if that's true and it happens this year it's gonna be on May the 17th if it happens next year it's gonna be on May the 20th so we know enough about the uh, the modeling to be able to say that 14 states New York DC sue Trump administration over work requirement I don't really have much of an opinion on that but um what they're doing whenever there's three and a half percent which there's the, the unemployment rate is really closer to 10 percent than it is the reason is a lot of people the way they 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 qualify people after you've been out of the workplace and you no longer qualify for unemployment and offense they don't count you anymore so if you don't have if you're out of the workplace and you haven't had a job 
you don't qualify for unemployment, they just don't count you. So the so the three percent numbers for those that had jobs that lost jobs, you have to have it to lose it, right? So it's it's very deceiving. So the numbers, yes, they are the best, but you still have Americans living in tents. A mile from Pelosi's office out in San Francisco, you have a line of tents. Like there, it seems like it's a mile long under the overpass out over there. You can go on Google Earth and see what's happening in parts in our cities that are run by the radical left. You can see it with the reports. The people that are being released, that's the story that should be in here. I'm going to include it in the, I'm going to find it and put it in myself in the uh, the um, Black Star newsletter. What's going on in New York is a travesty. It's happening in wherever you have sanctuary states like New York and California. It's happening. They're releasing illegals onto the street, even felon, felony that commit serious crimes. They refuse to deport them. They put them back out there. And all kinds of people, people that are being arrested for bad, really bad things. They're just letting them go and giving them a court date. The guy goes out. It was in the news yesterday. He says, I don't believe they let me go. He went and robbed another place. And he went and robbed another place. You know why? Because he's expecting they're going to put him back and he's going to get released again. There's no incentive to stop stealing when you're just slapping them on the hand and sending them out. So the cop, the cop that arrested the guy is in his, he's doing, filling out the paperwork. And you've already been released. That's how crazy it's becoming here in the United States. And if the radical left keeps going, and I've personally written the idiots in Washington, I mean, I'm sorry, in New York, these judges that are, that are opening the doors widely for the illegals that are there, giving them driver's licenses, giving them food stamps, giving them, giving them. The reason that you're seeing the food stamp story is because the Democrats want to give them to the illegals. And they have, in order to qualify, they have to go get a job. In order to get a job, they have to falsify documentation and break the law again. Every illegal here that's working had to get that job by falsifying documentation. They're all guilty of fraud. Millions of them, millions of them. That's the problem I have with Trump. So I'm never going to be a dispy because of their views. I'm never going to be, you know, I'm too far to the right of everybody that would ever run for president to actually go down and vote for somebody. Way too many illegals. When you start... If Trump really wanted to get rid of, uh, solve the illegal problem, which I don't think he does, if he really wanted to solve it, he wouldn't be building a wall. He'd be putting people into prison for hiring the illegals. And all of a sudden, everybody says, oh, drop the illegals like hot potatoes and start running after the Americans because they're illegal and they have to get the work done. Now would be a perfect time to do that with low unemployment. But that's all Trump has to do, threaten to enforce the law. And the illegals will self-deport. So building their walls just making it more difficult for them to self-deport, in my view. Okay, and uh, urges Barr to take action against the porn in industry. In the economic, strong ec economy prompts positive outlook for financial services industry. And uh, health and wellness. China reports second death from the uh, virus behind. We need to be watching this story very, very closely. This, uh, this, this coronavirus. Only a few people have died from it so far. This can be, this can become very, very serious at this moment. We're living in a cre in a critical period. That if you watch the movie Outbreak, there was a key moment with this monkey where it started. We're in this key moment right here where a few people have died. They're trying to track the source, but guess what? It's the New Year in Ch in China. And in the new year, that's when over all these people, all these Chinese, they jump on the airplanes and start traveling all over the world. And they say, well, we're going to check them. We're gonna, but the thing about these kind of types of viruses, whenever you start doing the research, then you're going to realize there's all these different kinds of virus. They mutate. And there are people that are carriers. Many times a virus like this, like the H1N1, Remember when it came out, 2009, 2010? Triple, triple recombinant. Many, many people were carriers that never showed one symptom. They're carrying it. They pass it along to others. This one passes from person to person through the air. These are the types of things that create pandemics. We have to be extremely careful because this could be what we're looking for to set the stage for the roadblocks and things 
part of the elite safe failsafe plan to run underground. This is the type of thing I'm looking for. Now, let's see if it spreads. It, it will happen in the spring. See, the spring's coming. We're in the winter. Spring's coming. So the timeline looks like this could be part of the Black Star being here in 2020. We'll see. And if, if, and if I'm doing a little a bit of the tweet of tweeting. Don't do much of it. But lately, I have been. This uh, what's going on in Washington, D.C. right now. We're living in a historic period. And you're going to see me talking about five more years that I tweet sometimes. I don't really, I don't, I'm writing that to people that don't know anything about the Black Star to try to shame them and for different reasons, top Christian health sites. But um, I really, really don't believe, I really, really don't believe, these are some of my friends, that um, we have that much more time. If we did have that much more time. Things would be different. The, the earth is telling us that we don't have that much more time. So that's what I want to share with you in this, uh, this lengthy report. Get more information right here at the website. This is uh, Black Star stuff. It's right here. The next projected date is right here. See? May the 17th. Right here. It could be, if I'm off 3 degrees on this alignment date, that it's this year. So we're not, it could be easily this year. And uh, this is where you sign up to the uh, the premium program to join us in chat. Have me as your tutor and things like that. Like um, Brian and like um, Trevor and others. That's how you get your, your featured article right here at the top that I write. You join, you ask me the question, ask me the right question, you know, good question. You know, that's, it so looks like it's the focus. I can you help, you can help me to make a presentation to help others for that week then that's what we're looking for that I appreciate Trevor you doing that this week and Brian for you doing that last week hope you guys are blessed by it and um, those and so it gives us the opportunity to help those that are watching us I know there's only a few of you that are watching us on YouTube please share this video and uh, let's try to help more people and whether there's just even if it's just one of you then it's it's 100% worth it for me the heavenly reward is what we're after right and we get that by helping others see the truth of God's living word. So I'll uh, get more information right here at the website. Lots of start right. If you're brand new to all this, start right here. Start right here. And um, you can get the 2019, the first. I'm going to update this eventually. And and uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll do it sooner rather than later. Get So you can get a hold of the... Uh, you know, one of the 2020 newsletters. But this right here is going to start off with the two Gospels. This is where you're going to start off. The video to the first newsletter is in the upper left corner of that one, just like just like this one appears. Go all the way back up to the top. Right here. This video link, there's no link there now, but as soon as this uploads, I'm going to put it here. That puts everything into one document for you guys that are supporting the research appreciate your support again very very much and i'll see you on eventually i'm going to be making um more reports during the week right now moving through january i still have tons and tons and tons of work to do and i'm going through this medical crisis here at the, at the time so what you see with this youtube channel is not what's the way things are going to be in the future um, my health's going to going to turn around the situation that we're dealing with here in uh and our place is going to turn around and then all my notifications for the Black Star and, every, and, every, and all those notifications are going to be out. It takes me the whole month of January to get all that paperwork done. And then you're going to see more where, um, like Brian's questions, very, very good questions, Brian. Each one of those would have been their own video if I would have had the time to be able to do that. So thank you guys again. I look forward for, to great things for this project, even though it's small at the moment. Black Star project started small too, just like this. We'll see how much we can get it built by the time the Black Star gets here, basically. So thank you again, and I'll see you on the next, uh, if there's not a special report during the week, then I'll see you on the next uh, report coming out next Tuesday. And if you subscribe right now, I'll be watching throughout the day, and I'll get you the information so you can join us. I'll get you your notification email, your Dropbox folder links, so you can access all the newsletters in one place, and so that you can join us in chat this evening. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I hope to see you there.